I'm not going to belabor the moment any longer. The scripture text for your hearing was already read, but I want to focus in on verse 10. So if you'll just rise to your feet quickly and let's focus on that 10th verse. I hear Shannon in my ear telling me to slow down. She's a good wife. Now, when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. May God add an understanding to his already blessed word. I'd like to take a few minutes to speak from the subject, attitude of gratitude. Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., Deshaun Perry, Shanquilla Robinson, Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonglaves, Zena Canodo, Ethan Chapin. These are just a few of the young people that have lost their lives in the past couple of weeks that we know about to senseless violence. From shootings to stabbings to beatings, we have a serious problem in our world. These things happen so much in our world today that if we are not careful, we will become numb and insensitive to these tragedies. Look at your neighbor and say, we need an attitude of gratitude. I truly believe that if more people were grateful for the things they have in life, the blessings in their life, that they would not be so quick to take another person's life. I pray every day for my enemies. I ask God to bless my enemies real good. I say bless them from the crown of their heads to the soul. I want them so, so overwhelmingly bless my enemies that they don't have time to think about me. Yeah, yeah. In, in four days, we will be in the midst of one of the greatest holidays in the world. That's right, Black Friday. I mean Thanksgiving, I mean Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving because honestly, anybody who knows me knows that I love to eat. People think I work out, you know, to stay in shape. No, I work out so I can eat. I'm always trying to move Thanksgiving dinner time up to noon. And Shane's like, babe, we can't have dinner at noon. I'm like, why? It takes four hours for the meat to cook. Kick it the night before. I want to eat at noon. To me, the earlier, the better. That way you can spend the rest of the time hanging with family, eating food, watching the Cowboys lose. Amen. Fly, Eagles, fly. Whether it's turkey, stuffing, mashed potatoes, green beans, rolls, greens, sweet potato pie, my all-time favorite macaroni and cheese, candy yams, and ham. Oh, man, I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Anyway, in four days, we will celebrate Thanksgiving. We will gather around the table, share what we are thankful for. I'm thankful for this, and I'm thankful for that. My prayer to you, for you today is that you don't wait until Thanksgiving to say thank you. That you're not waiting until the turkey is carved, the chitlins are clean, the pie is sliced to say thank you. As children of God, as a family of believers, as members of the body of Christ, we don't need a special occasion to say thank you. As a matter of fact, no matter what we are going through, no matter what your situation or your circumstance, we should always have an attitude of gratitude. And this is what I love about Daniel. Look at the text. Now, when Daniel learned the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room while the windows were open towards Jerusalem. Three times a day. He got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he'd done before. So let's look at this story a little bit closer. In our text today, Darius appoints 120 satraps. A satrap is a provincial governor in the ancient Persian Empire. And Daniel was one of the three administrators that is over the 120 satraps. But Daniel catches the king's eye. The Bible says, now Daniel is dis has distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Someone say favor. favor. Now, favor, as we know, isn't fair. 
That is why the other satraps, advisors, and leaders began to plot against Daniel. The problem was they couldn't find no wrong against him because Daniel had integrity, y'all. Y'all do know what integrity is, right? That means you do what you say and you say what you do. You talk the talk. You walk the walk. Amen? Let me stop parenthetically on the way to where I'm going and ask my church family, is that our testimony? If someone went looking for dirt in our lives, what would they find? You don't have to answer me. But it is definitely something we all need to think about. Someone's thinking right now, I have some cleaning to do. I have some things I need to clean up. I have some things I need to get fixed. I have some things I need to get right. Now back to my text. They're, they could find no wrong in Daniel's character. So they had to attack him from a different angle. They knew that Daniel took his relationship with God very seriously. You know anybody on your job that knows you take your relationship with God very seriously? So they're always trying to test you and see, you know, they, they, they go to the boss and tell on you to see if you'll still stay saved. And when they talk about you, they all go out to eat coffee and don't invite you. We don't want that Jesus freak playing with us. But the minute something go wrong, you don't want to come to to ask you to pray for them. <laughs> So they knew that's the only way they could get him. So they, so they went to uh, King Darius and, and had him make a decree that for 30 days, no one could pray to any god or any human except for the king. And if they did, they'd be thrown in the lion's den. When Daniel heard this decree, he didn't complain. He did not get upset. He did not call his parents on the phone. He didn't text his boys. He didn't go on Facebook, Twitter, or TikTok to get a pity party. He didn't throw shade on anybody else. He did not lose control. He went home, went upstairs in his room, and he prayed. And when the satraps and the advisors and the leaders heard and saw Daniel praying, they saw him, y'all, because the windows was open. He didn't try to hide it. They're like, oh, look. They couldn't wait to go tell the king. Somebody say snitches get stitches. That's the rule of my class. And no, it's not. I'm joking. <laughs> in spite of all that was going on in Daniel's life, despite the fact that he knew that every time he kneeled to pray three times a day, which is the Jewish custom to pray three times a day towards Jerusalem, with his windows open, he risked death. He risked getting thrown in the lion's den. He did not care. He was committed to his commitment to the Lord. And every day, three times a week, he kneeled and he prayed. This time, though, the Bible says that he prayed and gave thanks to God. Maybe he knew what was coming and he was thanking God in advance. The word thanks in the text in Hebrew is spelled Y-E-D-A, pronounced Yeda, meaning to give praise or give thanks. And someone may be thinking, what does Daniel have to be thankful for? He's a prisoner in a foreign land. He got taken away from his home and became a slave. This is true. But in this foreign land, he has accomplished a great deal. His actions and his attitude have allowed him to rise to the top, y'all. He's the cream of the crop, and he's about to be given the keys to the kingdom, which make the people around him very jealous. And this puts him in the situation he's in right now. Haters are going to hate. But they only hate when you're doing something. Because I ain't got no haters. Yeah, you ain't doing nothing. Everybody like me. Yeah, they, sure they do. Start doing something positive. They just come out the woodwork, y'all. Like cockroaches when you turn on the lights. Whew. Whew. Man, man, man. Rolls into the cream of the crop. Look at your neighbor and say to them, in spite of your situation, you need an attitude of gratitude. Oh, that was the wrong neighbor. Turn the other way. <laughs> Say, Daniel risked death giving God thanks. Your situation ain't that bad. You need to have an attitude of gratitude. Having an attitude of gratitude affects us in three areas, and I'll let you go. First of all, having an attitude of gratitude affects us in the prelude. The prelude is an action or event serving as an introduction to something more important. In other words, the prelude is what happens before something happens. 
It is the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm is a very important moment in time because it gives us the opportunity to be prepared before the storm actually hits. Notice I said it gives us the opportunity to prepare before the storm. The problem is not everyone takes advantage of this opportunity. How many times have we seen or heard of people losing their homes or even their lives because they did not take the opportunity in the prelude to give preparation to the storm? I'm just going to wait it out. You're going to wait it out? It's a hurricane. <laughs> Get your stuff, board up your house, and go. Even the NFL took the opportunity to prepare for the storm in Buffalo. They moved the game to Detroit. Amen? They ain't want to lose no money. The other satraps had the same opportunity to prepare as Daniel did, but they decided to do something else. Instead of improving themselves, they were consumed with taking Daniel down. Instead of handling their responsibilities, they were more concerned about what Daniel did or did not do. Huh. The prelude also prepares us for when the enemy intrudes. Oh, yeah, the enemy is going to intrude. Daniel could not even pray without the enemies intruding. The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And we have to be ready. The Bible says in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Oh, the weapon will be formed, but it will not prosper. Cancer will form, but it won't prosper. Diabetes will form, but it will not prosper. Heart disease will form. Depression will form. Anxiety will form. Drama on the job will form. Problems in your marriage will form. Bereavement will form. The weapons will form, but they will not prosper especially when you have an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> Secondly, we have an attitude of gratitude. It affects us in the interlude. Now, the interlude is an intervening period of time, an interval or an intermission. It is a break in the action. The interlude keeps us during the storm. Sometimes when all hell is breaking loose in our lives, we need to take a break. And you think to yourself, how am I supposed to take a break in the middle of the storm? Just sit down. We need a breather. We need to sit this one out. We need to take a load off. We need to call a time out. We need half time. We need the two minute morning. We need to catch our breath. And many times we do not do this because we think that we can't. We think that we have to keep on going. We think that we're the energizer bunny. We think we can't stop now, but the truth of the matter is, if we don't take the break, if we don't catch our breath, if we don't sat down somewhere in my Pastor Kelly voice, the storm will overtake us. Daniel took a break three times a day, every day to pray and give God thanks. How else could he have an attitude of gratitude? He was in constant communication with God. I mean, his world was beginning to fall apart before his very eyes. The very thing that got him where he was in life was the very thing that was about to bring him down. But he refused not to talk to his God. He refused to give in to peer pressure. He refused to bend to their ways. He refused to not go with the crowd. He refused to change who he was. He refused to deny his God. And he was willing to die for it. And everyone around him except the king was hoping he would die. In spite of it all, Daniel continued to take advantage of the interludes in his life and give God thanks because of his attitude of gratitude. You know, you know, many of us, when things start to go wrong, we get all bitter and bent out of shape and we start pointing fingers and blaming everybody. But you know, you, you, do, you do know that most of the stuff you go through in life is your fault. What did Michael say? I'm starting with the man in the mirror. mirror. Most of the stuff we deal with are consequences of our choices and our actions. And then we want to blame God. I can't believe God. I can't believe God did that. I didn't do that. You did that. You quit your job. And then you got mad because you got evicted because you weren't paying your rent. But mama always told me you don't quit your job unless you got another job. You mad. You, I can't believe you this. <laughs> he looking at you like, I ain't tell you to quit that job. That was a good job. 
Just because you didn't like the supervisor was no reason to quit. They was, about to, they was about to retire. You had one more year to wait. And then you was going to be the supervisor. But you quit. And now you mad at God. Come on, people. You got to have an attitude of gratitude no matter what's going on in your life. Because life is hard. You know, you know, don't get it twisted. Just because you saved don't mean everything going to be all right. God never promised us that. He promised not to leave us or forsake us. He promised that no matter what we're going through, that he'd be right there with us. And for that, I'm grateful. Amen? Let me close this out. First, having an attitude of gratitude affects us in the prelude. Secondly, having an attitude of gratitude affects us in the interlude. And last but not least, having an attitude of gratitude affects us in the postlude. And when I was sharing my points with Sister Shannon, she was like, is that a word? I said, yes. <laughs> it's in the dictionary. The postlude is a written or spoken epilogue, an afterword. This is what happens after the storm. I could take advantage of this preaching moment and get everyone excited about giving God praise for bringing us out of the storm. And that is truly a reason to give God a shout of praise. But I think it's more important to understand that we have an attitude of gratitude before, during, after, and all around the storm. That is what makes the attitude of gratitude so real, so meaningful, and so very important. Because our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our situation or our circumstance. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by what's going on in our lives. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by how much money is in our bank account. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by how big our house is. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by what kind of car we drive. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our political party. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our pedigree. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our fraternity or sorority. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our degrees or lack thereof. Our attitude of gratitude is not determined by our popularity. Our attitude of gratitude is determined by the one we give gratitude to. Our attitude of gratitude is determined by the one we call God. Our attitude of gratitude is determined by the one who has made it all possible. Our attitude of gratitude is determined by the one who was, who is, and who will ever be. Our attitude of gratitude is not just about what God does. Our attitude of gratitude is about who God is. And I don't know about anybody else in the room, but when it's all said and done, I want to see him. I want to look upon his face. I want to be ready when he comes. And the best way to see him is to have an attitude of gratitude because your attitude of gratitude will determine your altitude. This is what happens to Daniel. You see, they turn on him. He faces judgment and his sentences for his crime. As much as the king hated to do it, he throws Daniel in the lion's den. But early the next morning, the king's rush to the lion's den to check on Daniel yelling Daniel are you okay and Daniel approaches as Daniel approaches he has not he says I have not been harmed and I never meant any harm to you immediately Daniel was pulled up everybody say altitude out of the lion's den and the men that accused him were thrown in the lion's den and they were devoured I guess snitches get more than stitches in this case amen anyway not only is Daniel elevated but Darius honors God as well look at verse 26 I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel for he is the living God and steadfast forever his kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall never endure to the end he delivers and rescues and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth who had who was delivered Daniel from the power of the lion so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius in the reign and the reign of Syria somebody say attitude of gratitude you got to have an attitude of gratitude. I'm going to close out with this story, y'all. I love my story. Second community knows I love my stories. I love my story. This story is uh, is about it's about gratitude. It's by Nick Ortner. A blind boy uh, sat on some steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He had a sign which read, I'm blind, please help. There were only a few coins in the hat. Spare change from folks as they hurried past. A man was walking by. He, he, he took a few coins from his pocket. He dropped them in, in the hat. And then he looked at the sign. He turned it around and wrote some words on it. Then he put the sign back in the boy's hand so that everyone who walked by would see the new words on the sign. Soon, the hat began to fill up. A lot more people were giving money to the blind boy. That afternoon, the man who had changed the sign returned 
to see how things were going, the boy recognized his footsteps and asked, were you the one who changed my sign this morning? What did you write? And the man said, I only wrote the truth. I said what you said, but I said it in a different way. I wrote, today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. Both signs spoke the truth, but the first sign simply said the boy was blind, while the second sign conveyed to everyone walking by how grateful they should be to see. When your life seems full of troubles, it seems difficult to maintain an attitude of gratitude, doesn't it? All we see are our problems, like a blackened storm cloud casting a dark shadow over our lives. And at times when everything seems to be going smoothly, we often take these precious moments for granted too, don't we? Caught up in the bliss, comfort, and familiarity of it all, we can simply forget to be thankful. So what then is gratitude? Simply put, (laughs) <laughs> gratitude is a habit y'all it's a way of looking at the world and all the good things in it with a feeling of appreciation regardless of whether or not your current situation is to your liking gratitude is a heart-centered approach to being at peace with yourself with all you have when you practice this feeling of gratitude it attracts even more things into your life for which to be grateful for go ahead try it out now what or who do you have in your life to be thankful for look at your neighbor and say attitude of gratitude I I, I know times are rough I I know the storm is raising I know we're sick of gun violence but we need to have an attitude of gratitude I I know we're tired of police brutality I know it seems like the war in politics will never end I know the opioid epidemic is out of control but we need an attitude of gratitude I know that it seems like nobody wants to work anymore I know that cancer is back I know the blood pressure is high I know that diabetes is scary I know the marriage is on the rocks but we need an attitude of gratitude I know that depression is real I know that the anxiety is building I know that you didn't get the promotion I know you didn't get approved from the loan I know your kids are out of control but you need an attitude of gratitude but you are still standing you are still here you made it through the storm you have a roof over your head you got clothes on your back you got food in your belly you got some money in your pocket you're better today than you were yesterday Bill King said yesterday is history tomorrow is a mystery and today is a gift of God that's why we call it the present and you have a God that loves you more than you could ever imagine a God that can do anything but fail a God that can heal a God that delivers a God that makes ways out of no ways a God that makes the impossible possible a God that that never will leave you or forsake you he's the alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the refuge from the storm, the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness, the great I am that I am that I am that I am. And because of this and so much more, you need to have an attitude of gratitude. You need to put your hands together. You need to open up your mouth. You need to give God some praise. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. All because of what the Lord has done for us. I don't know about anybody else in the room, but my God has been so good to me. I can't do nothing but give him praise. I can't do nothing but thank him. I don't know about you, but if he's been good to you, you need to tell him thank you. You need to change your attitude. Look at your neighbor and say, attitude check check your attitude check it out the door we don't need the negativity our God's been too good ain't he all right come on and put your hands together gotta have an attitude of gratitude and and I love what the author of the story said he said the attitude of gratitude has to be a habit Y'all remember that habit that was so hard for you to break? It's funny how we keep doing bad habits. Deke, we can keep doing bad habits, you know, but we can't get involved in a good habit. Like praying every day. That's a good habit. (laughs) 
Open up the book every day. Good habit. I, I just brought this Bible because Bishop gave me this Bible when he installed me. I can't read this Bible because the print's too small, but I wanted to bring it home with me. <laughs> but I open my Bible every day. Having an attitude of gratitude is a habit, y'all. I, come on, y'all. Things ain't always going to go your way. But that don't mean you can't be grateful for what you got. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing. Most of us have more than we need anyway. You mad because you got the iPad with 32 gigs instead of 64. You got the iPad. You mad because they, they was out of the blue Lexus, but you got the red one. Are you tripping? You got a house? You know, like, you know, couple, you know, <laughs> God is funny, man. He has a sense of humor. So, you know, uh, you guys can be seated. I'm done. I'm done. I'm just going to share this with you. I'm going to let you go have a seat. Have a seat. But God, you know, God is funny. You know, we make plans and God laughs. I tell, I share that with second all the time. But uh, we were blessed. When I met my wife, we got married. I, you know, I begged her to be my wife. And we were married, Dick Scale, in about six months. And Shannon says, baby, I want to buy a house. We lived in a townhouse, two-floor townhouse, with one and a half bathrooms, two bedrooms. I was cool. And nobody in my, my family ever owned a house, Philip. So when she said, I want to buy a house, I said, what you talking about? We got a house. She said, no, I want to buy a house. I'm still like, what you talking? We got a house. We got this. It's right beside the pool. <laughs> so we, we, you know, so we went to um, Barbara Reed. She was our realtor, our first realtor. And um, God bless, God rest her soul. And um, we looked at a bunch of houses and we found a house. We bought the house. I was grateful. Someone from a little small town in Meadville, Pennsylvania, where there were class of 265, my senior class, 13 of us were black. They called me Bad Brian because I was bad. <laughs> Not Michael Jackson bad. But nobody thought Brian would do anything. Matter of fact, my school guidance counselor told me I shouldn't go to college. I should try to find something else to do. But I got a bachelor's and two master's degrees. <laughs> attitude of gratitude so we bought that house and after a while you know we decided we wanted to move because our current house we really didn't want our kids going to that school so you got to be smart when you do stuff you know you want your kids to go to good school so you move here's it and i'm a little sidebar i'm gonna get to it okay so us black people i'm talking to y'all so you move to pickerington or reynoldsburg because you want a better life for your kids right but you got to leave what you left back there <laughs> I ain't getting no amens. You don't move to the suburbs and bring the city with you. If you're trying to do better, then be better. Amen? It's not popular. I'll play, but that's our blackness. No, man, not all of it. Some of that stuff we need to leave alone so we can be better. Amen? There's more to our black children than a football or a basketball track we got some brilliant minds amen and when the teacher call you don't be yelling at the teacher you know your kid is bad get them together amen but back to where i was going so we moved right we moved going all the way around the mulberry bush i'm gonna get out of here so we moved and um we moved into pickerington because we want our kids to go to pickerington schools i work in pickerington i didn't know the taxes were so high no he told me that <laughs> but anyway, so over the past couple of years, God blessed us, and Shannon always had a dream to build a house. Now I'm thinking she's really crazy. So we're going to building this house, and in the process of building a house, we sold our house in two days. Y'all remember when it was crazy? So we had to move. We moved into a two-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment, and um, we had four bedrooms, three-and-a-half baths. Now, the space of the place was okay. I was cool with that. I grew up poor. That wasn't no big deal. But I got kind of accustomed to three bathrooms. So having one bathroom was 
kind of rough. So as you know, with teenage boys or girls, you know, we tell them to hurry up. Christmas, what happened? They slow down. <laughs> hurry up, we gotta go. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> but when they gotta be somewhere, they rushing you. I don't wanna be late. So anyway, we moved in the house in April and um, God is good. Attitude of gratitude. We, we were able to bring my mom from Pennsylvania and move her in with us until we found her a place. <laughs> Attitude of gratitude. I, I, I just believe that when you are appreciative for what you have, that God will bless you with more. <laughs> so I did all of that <laughs> just to say, be grateful be grateful church God has been too good to you for you to have any other attitude than an attitude of gratitude you think but you don't know what I've been through yeah I don't matter if you breathing you need to be grateful